In this video, I'll show you how to take raw data right from the Hubble Space Telescope in individual channels and combine it into your own RGB color with all using free software. All right, so I'll provide a link here in the descriptions where you can navigate over to the uh, Hubble Legacy Archive. The first thing you want to do is enter the site. And now in the search, you can either do a simple search or you can do an advanced search and select the uh, instruments that you're interested in. So I'm going to uncheck some of these. I'll use the Wide Field Camera 3, 2, and the AACS. Now just as an example, let's put in the Orion Nebula. And now I want to click on the Images tab. So we have over 1400 results. And for this tutorial, I want to start off simple and just look at these first three images, which is going to be the blue filter, the green filter, and the red filter, as indicated here, red, green, and blue. Now they have combined this for you if you want to see how they have done it. So I'm just going to download the RGB data and then I'm going to combine it myself. So now the way this works is that when you click this button it adds it to the cart. So we're going to add all three of these to the cart. Okay so if we click on this cart icon here are the three files that we have uh, have ready in our cart and they're really quite large. Each one of these in this particular example is about 300 megabytes each. So I have tried to zip it and sometimes it fails so I'm just going to use the download sequentially uh, button and there's a little warning here saying that it may or may not work but it works for me. And then now we just simply say fetch HLA data. So the first one is a text file and what this is is this has metadata for what we are uh, having our cart right now and so that's why that one was so quick and now it's going to sequentially download these one at a time. So now that the download is complete we're ready to start uh, our processing. As you can see these, this is in a file format called FITS and if you're not familiar with FITS and FIT stands for a Flexible Image Transport System. And that's the file format that we're going to convert these into anyway if they were JPEGs in serial. Okay, so now I have here a window open on a portable 2 terabyte hard drive. And so this is where I do all of my image processing because a lot of this is just so big. I just don't have enough space. I'm going to create a new folder here and I'm going to call this Hubble uh, Orion. Okay, and then I'll just drag all of the data into that directory. All right, now that's done, I'm going to open up Cyril. And the first thing you want to do is set the home directory. So here's that two terabyte uh, directory and then in image processing I have um, Hubble and then Hubble Orion. So we set that directory and now you can see that that is here. Now Cyril works with FITS files and the interesting and really handy thing about this is that normally we would add all of these files and convert them to FITS if they were images like JPEG or raw images or whatnot. But the great thing about it is that I can go straight to image processing and then I can select the red, the green, the blue and any other data that I want such as hydrogen alpha or sulfur or oxygen. So I'm going to select the red button here, the open. And so you can see the red image is right here, the R. So we'll select that. Now this is going to be a little bit of a delay because this 
is huge. And so we've got a little spinning pizza ball there. All right, so we have our red channel. And so you can see that this is switched to red, green, blue, and RGB. There's nothing in the green or the blue let yet. So we're going to select our green. Here's the green. We'll select that. Again, it appears that nothing is happening, but they're trying to load hundreds of megabytes. And so there's a lot of uh, delay here. And we'll do the same thing with the blue. Okay, so we have our red, green, and blue. And I want to make sure that these are properly aligned. It looks like it's pretty good right as it is. But I'm going to select a small area here in the center. And select image pattern, planetary deep sky, and click the align tab. Now this is going to take a while, so I will pause the video. Okay, now that that process is complete, you can just click in here to remove this box. And now let's go over to our RGB tab. Okay, so at this point, this looks really nice. And there are further things we can do in Cyril, or we could export it. Um, if we go and look at the uh, this finalized color balance tool, this is useful for setting the gray point. But what I've found is that it is a one-time thing, and if you make a mistake, then you have to start all over. There is no reset. And so since the RGB at this point is so good, I think that I'm going to skip that. So I'm just going to close this. And now you can see that we are in the linear state. So this is unstretched as is. And so if we want to export it, this little download button here, we can choose a TIFF or a JPEG. If you want to edit it in GIMP or Photoshop, then choose TIFF. And I'll say that the, I'll call this an RGB. And save that in the directory. Now, as a 32-bit works for me, I can use that in GIMP. If you would like to use it in Cyril, we could use uh, the image processing over here to um, look at the saturation or the histogram. So the histogram already looks really, really good, much better than uh, from a home telescope. And so you can adjust the curves of the levels if you want to stretch it or change the curves. I'm just going to reset that. I, I think this looks pretty good as is, but I think I'm going to look at the saturation. So this uh, bar right here is really touchy. Uh, if you hit it just wrong, it'll just zoom over here. So I'm going to try and just uh, slowly increase this. Everything is really slow because if you look up here, I'm using 15.8 gigabytes of memory. And I believe I have 16 gigabyte uh, memory on my RAM. And the file is so large that every correction uh, takes a long time. And the image is so good as is. I think I'm, what I'm going to do is export a JPEG and so that I can uh, just save it, uh, this particular version, and then do the rest of the processing in GIMP and maybe scale the image size down because it's just too big to work with. And we'll go back to the JPEG and this time I'm going to select a lower quality just to make this a little bit smaller. I also have a tool that can do this where you can save it just as big as you want and then resize it to a particular resolution. Take a look at this. Uh, the TIFF is 3.89 gigabytes and it is just huge. Uh, you can work with it if you have enough memory, but the resolution is astounding of how big it is. And so unmodified, if you just save the JPEG as is, it's of 160 megabytes. 
And so I scaled it down at 70% and this got me to a 10 megabyte file. And incidentally, this is about 18,000 pixels of resolution each way. And, and that in itself is large. So you have a lot of options for editing. You can, opt, you can do the TIFF, JPEG, or anything else you would like. But in my case, I just didn't have enough resources to do nearly a four gigabyte file. All right, well, let's just try that just for kicks and giggles and try to do the 160 uh, megabyte file. So now you're free to do anything you would like uh, in your image manipulation program. We can try and adjust the saturation a little bit. See, now it's a lot quicker because instead of gigabytes, I'm dealing with megabytes. So you can tweak this how you want. I think just a slightly more saturation looks pretty good. And you can play with your levels or anything else you desire. You see how well this is, uh, the histogram looks right out of the box. And so normally with raw data, you have to stretch it all the way back here and I just cannot believe how good a data the Hubble has. It's really very easy to work with.